Hi guys, it's Rachel. So I'm really, really sorry that I haven't done a vlog in so long. I just literally have a couple of minutes left on a tag video that I've uploaded or will be already uploaded by the time you guys see this to this channel and I'll put a link to it here so you can see it. Um, but yeah, I'm really sorry that I haven't been around. I've just been kind of super busy and then I think I've been extra tired as well and I'm pretty sure it's because of winter. I find that it's just so hard to stay motivated and awake in winter. I feel like I'm a bear. I really need to hibernate and I just can't. And now I'm really blue and I'm really sorry. This is just not going well. Um, I'm going to keep filming anyway because I want to get this video up before I have to go out and um, I'm not video, it's not going to be up before I go out, but at least filmed before I go out. Um, what's been going on in my life? Yesterday I went to the RTA, which is the Road and Traffic Authority in New South Wales anyway, and um, I took my final test to get my full license and I passed. I didn't think I was going to, because um, it's kind of like hard, like they're kind of like statistics questions and then you have to do some like videos and tap on the screen where you think you should slow down or break or when there's a hazard or whatever, and I just... I thought that I wouldn't pass, but I did, so yay! Um, so I officially have my full license now, which is um, kind of scary for other people. No, that's not true. I'm actually a really good driver. I'm very safe. Um, <laughs> but I have my full license, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. And I have it for five years, so it expires in like expires like on July sixteenth, two thousand and sixteen, which is um, kind of scary because by then I'll be what twenty seven. I'll be 27 by the time that I have to get a new license and oh my gosh, I just, 27 to me feels like it's so far off and so old. I still feel like I'm a little kid sometimes, even though I'm not, I pay taxes, I pay health insurance now, I work full time, but I still feel like I'm young. I don't know of anybody else, let me know if you're sort of, I'm sure I'm probably, I'll be 30 and I'll be still saying the same thing and I'm guessing if you're out there and you're older and you still feel young let me know make me feel better <laughs> um but I don't know I just I'm excited that I have my license but the fact that it expires in five years is kind of scary and the fact that I'm stuck with the photo for five years is scary as well because you're not allowed to smile anymore we used to be able to smile in my like sort of other licenses you could smile and now it's like a passport photo and you're not allowed to smile so I look kind of um I actually kind of look almost like I'm smirking because the lady who was taking the photo, they were talking behind the counter and they made me laugh and then I'm supposed to sit there sort of not smiling. So the photo is not very nice and I'm kind of horrified that I'm stuck with that for five years but luckily I don't really have to get my license out that much except for when sort of people are checking my ID. Which the security guards generally, at least for my old license, always thought that it was a fake. And I don't know why, I don't look really any different. I don't look any different than I did when I was 13 by the fact that for two years in that time I had braces. Literally when I was 13 I looked like I could pass for 18 and I know because when I went on a cruise people asked me to buy them drinks and I'm like I'm 13 and these people were like 16, 17 and they thought I was all over, they thought I was over 18 but then I never changed and by the time I got to 18, 19 I still looked the same and I still haven't really changed that much. I don't have a fringe so the most thing that kind of changes is maybe my hair length but I don't really look that different. I think it's my fat face. It's chubby cheeks that um kind of make me look younger than I am but I'm not I'm 22 I promise I'm not lying which is actually old to be getting your full license in Australia you can get it when you're 20 but I didn't get my peas until a little bit later and then I didn't get my green peas again until like I didn't do it it was, wasn't after one year I was like almost 18 months and then after two years of being on my green peas they kind of I think I could have gone for my full license in March but I again I extended it and waited till July um because I just never have the time and I just kept on forgetting to book the appointment and then this week I thought nope stuff it I'm gonna go book this appointment I want to get it over and done with I don't want it sort of hanging over my head because I had some friends who didn't pass straight away and I don't know I just was kind of worried that I wasn't going to pass and it's not that I really cared that much I mean secretly I do care if I fail at things but um it wasn't that I cared that much the fact that you have to pay $40 every time you take the test and I'm kind of cheap and I really don't want to do that so I'm happy that I passed on the first go but I did that thing I don't know if anybody else does this as well where you've got like a test or something um I didn't tell anyone not even my parents or my friends that I booked it yet so just in case I didn't pass, I wouldn't. they wouldn't know, which is kind of ridiculous and it's just this little quirk of mine that I really don't like 
people thinking that I failed them because I feel like I'm letting them down. Like, it was just ridiculous. It's my driver's test. How am I letting my parents down or someone down by not passing? But I still feel, especially when I'm paying, it's not even like someone else is paying, but I just sometimes feel like that. So I didn't tell anyone. I don't think I'm the only one who does that. I'm sure there are other people who sort of maybe book tests and things or if they have a test come out, they might not tell anyone just in case they don't do so well and yeah I don't know it's kind of weird and it's probably pretty stupid but I don't know it's just what I did but anyway all's well that ends well um other things that are going on in my life at the moment I'm currently surrounded by chocolates I told you I think in my last video that I was going to sign up to abseil down um, a building for charity and I did it which is really scary because now I have to try and raise uh $1,500 for charity, which actually is quite a lot because it is kind of hard to get people to donate. And I totally understand that because I feel like somebody's asking me for money sort of every week. So I decided that I'd go and do buy chocolates to sell. And Cadbury, um, at least in Australia, does, and I think in New Zealand as well, does like a fundraising thing where you get like a box of chocolates and you sell them for like a dollar each and stuff like that. And you sort of the profit that you make because you don't buy them for that much the profit you can donate to, ch to charity or to a sports club or whatever we used to do it for netball all the time and for dancing um whenever we're trying to raise money for a concert or to go away or whatever we were doing we would be selling chocolate so i have 20 boxes of chocolates to sell and there's about 50 chocolates in each box like they're kind of like giant freddos or caramellos and crunchies and boosts and cherry ripes and all these other chocolates um and yeah, so I have 20 times 50, and I don't even know the maths on that. I should. But it's a lot. It's pretty much a lot, and I've got a couple of months to sell it. And it's really hard, because I'm trying to be, like, healthy, and I'm on a bit of a diet, and um, literally next to that's sitting on my desk every day at work is about three boxes of chocolates, and they're there, just taunting me. They're literally calling out my name, and I need, like, a visor here, because they're sitting on my desk, and... It's really hard and I'm trying so hard to sell these chocolates. So if anybody has any tips on fundraising and how to um, get people to donate money, let me know because I'd really appreciate it. And I'm kind of scared too because I see this building, it's sort of near where I work. Um, it's actually next door to the building I actually work in. Every morning I get off the train, I kind of walk up and I look up at this building and think, oh my god, that's really, really high. It's like 26 stories or something like that. Um, and it's very scary, so I don't know if I'm going to actually, if I even if I raise the $1,500, I'm kind of scared that I'm going to get to the top and start to upsell down and just have my legs stop working, which is um, which, which could happen. I can see it happening, so we'll see how that goes, and I'll be sure to try and film so I can, or get someone, my parents or someone, if I do it on the Sunday, to film it so I can show you guys and as proof that, yes, I conquered my fear and and did it because even though I don't necessarily think that I'm scared of heights I do think I'm scared of death by falling from a very tall I'm scared of it failing and something happening and falling and so definitely I think when I touch the bottom it will be a um, conquering of a fear or overcoming my fear so I'm looking forward to that and it's for a good cause too I've never really done I've raised money for charity multiple times sort of for school and for other things but I've never done something like this sort of on my own where I'm sort of outwardly trying to raise a certain amount of money and and no it feels nice to do something good for charity it's like one of those good feelings that you one of those good things that give you good feeling in life so that is kind of fun that's what's going on in my life other than that I'm still working um I've been in my job now I think it's next Thursday it'll be four months which is crazy I feel like it wasn't that long ago that I was sitting in front of this camera talking to you about whether I was going to take this new job or not and then how I was sort of scared and how it was kind of crazy and new and I didn't even know if I was going to sort of fit in and it's just I thought they were speaking a different language and it's crazy how quickly now I feel kind of comfortable there and I'm I really like it they seem like a really great company to work for and yeah I don't know I'm kind of happy at least for now where I'm at it's always in the back of my mind okay you have to think about what you're doing next and I'm not good at thinking about what I want to do next or how I want to progress I'm not sort of super ambitious and most people think I would be based on my sort of personality I guess it's kind of hard because you don't see me in everyday life you kind of see me in snippets but I think people would assume based on certain certain personality characteristics that I'd be ambitious but 
it's not that I'm not, it's just that I sort of, I struggle with sort of self-confidence in, in certain things, especially in like my job and work and school and things like that. And I know, again, that seems kind of odd considering I sit in front of a camera and people think that that sort of takes a lot of confidence, but I almost think it's easier. It's kind of easy to be just sitting in front of a camera in your room. It's almost in some ways anonymous, um, which is nuts because it's not really anonymous. I'm sticking it on the on the internet for the world to see but it still is there's a kind of that separation as opposed to sort of standing in front of someone in real life and I'm just not that I guess confident in my own abilities which then makes me I guess less ambitious because I'm less um, inclined to go for something I don't know bigger and better but I'm trying to work on that I don't know if I'll ever change but I'm trying to work on it so there's always that in the back of my mind about what I'm going to do next, but at the moment I don't know. I'm just kind of sticking with what I've got until I guess I have to change. Or something comes along in my life that makes me change. So yeah, that's what's going on in my life. Um, other than that, what else do I have to talk about? Ooh, I got an invitation. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before. I think I have about um, two of my friends that are getting married, and I said that they were getting married... Um, sort of they're doing like a destination wedding and I was originally going to be in Hawaii and it's now going to be in Fiji and I officially got sort of like the invitation or the save the date the other day and it was really cute cool actually I'm going to grab it for you look at this isn't that cute it's like a little message in the bottle and it has like the sand and like one of those um what are they called like cocktail umbrellas and some shells and then it's like got paper and you pull it up through the um the cork and there's like a little string so you can get the the little note out and I just thought it was super cute and I was really excited because I don't know sometimes I, I wasn't 100% sure if I was going to be invited even though they're sort of some of my closest friends and I don't know sometimes I it's just kind of I wasn't sure because it was sort of might have been only close family and yeah sometimes I don't feel like I'm always going to be included, but I was, so that was really fun, and I'm really excited about that. It's not until next May, so it's a long way off, but it's still something to be excited about, because I don't have any holidays planned, at least for a little while, and I really want to go overseas, and I really want to go to America. That is, like, my first stop. I want to a shopping trip in LA, because I'm so sick of spending so much money in Australia for things that are so much cheaper in other places, but that's a totally another story, and I could do a whole vlog on, um, my issue with the fact that things are too expensive here but anyway it's something to look forward to and the beach in the summer and it's um yeah I really like Fiji I've been there multiple times that's sort of the only real place sort of outside of Australia that I've been to um, other than a couple of little islands near here that I've been to on a cruise but the people are always super super friendly and I don't know it's just really like a laid-back place everything happens on Fiji time which is like just sort of when it happens which is cool but anyway, I think I'd better go because this is already super long and I want to save more topics to talk to you in my next vlog. So I think I've said this before, but if there's a topic that you want me to talk about, let me know in the bottom bar below something about my life or if you have a question you want to ask or advice or whatever. I don't know, this topic, this channel is kind of random. I said I was going to talk about books and I'm still going to do that. Um, I'm reading stuff at the moment, um, but I'm just... I don't know, work out what I'm going to say and whether people would be interested in that kind of thing. But anyway, I'm going to go because we're going to go look at display homes now with my mum. So have a great day um, and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye.